and who knows whether or not it will work, but let's just find out. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we're sitting with our fairy lights. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Okay, being centered, starting video. Hi, hi. <laughs> Hello there, my parasocial pals, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Chloe Payne, and I have no idea what I'm doing. Today, it's 2023, baby. Technically, as I'm sitting here uh, recording, it is December 30th, a beautiful, rainy, mild winter day in Oregon. I am so grateful to have had some time today to piddle about the house by myself and um, do a little bit of the sort of journaly, introspective, end of the year reflecting that I like to do and do that while, you know, just sort of like bopping around to music on my headphones and working on nesting projects. The uh, project that has come to fruition behind me here is something that has been on my to-do list for a long time since we moved into this house over the summer. We are really lucky with this house to have a small backyard area, but it is not covered. It's all just open grass. And I am very spoiled as a Pacific Northwesterner, I really, really like to have sort of an indoor outdoor space. I love being outside when it's raining. And so to have something like a covered porch or a garage, this is what we have set up right now is this is our garage. And uh, I'm able to just have the door open so that I can enjoy the rainy vibes. And I, for a long time, had been meaning to sort of um, personalize this space with, these are just some very old um, fairy lights that are sentimental for me. I, I got them when I sort of moved out on my own and uh, was going through a, a personally tumultuous time several years ago. So it just means a lot to be able to set them up now and have them uh, start to be present in my videos and for this to just be a little space where I can journal and read books and light candles. Do you want to see my candle? Let me try not to set my gloves on fire. We are rocking some lavender candle energy for the start of this new year reflection and we are sipping on some nice hot tea. This is a mug my girlfriend got me for Christmas. It has a heart on it and it's soft and it's currently filled with throat coat tea, I had the flu for Christmas, <laughs> which was unexpected. Uh, but I was really, really lucky. 
I got to enjoy um, the Christmas experience of hanging out with my family. We just, it worked better for our schedules to all sort of do like pre-Christmas. We kind of all celebrated uh, in the state of Washington um, during the week of like the 17th through the 22nd. That was sort of like my family Christmas week. And um, I caught something while I was traveling thankfully tested negative for COVID the whole time, but by the time I got back here, I was like, you know, stuck in bed with a fever and uh, not doing well uh, for the actual dates of like the 24th and the 25th. Um, so today is actually the first day that I am starting to feel like fully like myself physically again. I just sort of still have like a cough that is lingering, but aside from that, like, it felt incredible to be able to spend today just sort of like fully back with like my physical energy again and to work on this little project and now to be able to sit out here with my tea and uh, we'll definitely just still be taking copious sips of this is throat coat tea my favorite sort of you know medicinal way to deal with when you've got the the cough that is still trying to bother you and they like, threaten to attack your voice we gotta be vocal. We can't let sickness keep us from rambling on the internet. We can't do that. We can't let the illness win. Oh, and I can't remember if this is one of the kinds of tea that have like the cute little sayings on the thing. Oh yeah. The difference between a flower and a weed is judgment. Think about it. <laughs> Think about it. Use your noodle. So yeah, I'm just having a great time uh, sitting here with my wicker furniture and my fairy lights and it felt like a good moment to sit and ramble about the new year a little bit. I really love to watch other people's content that they create around this time of reflecting. I think that reflecting is super important. I really, I feel good in my brain and my soul and my heart when I give myself permission to stop and breathe and think about where I've come from and where I hope to be going. That centers me, that calms me down. My uh, anxiety frequently takes the form of rush and urgency and feeling like I'm not doing enough and like the solution to that is to move as quickly as possible. My ideal existence is one where, yes, of course I am working hard and proud of the work that I'm doing and where I have future goals and aspirations that I am looking forward to, but also where I have good day-to-day -day quality of life. I've been lucky enough to have lived long enough and fucked up in enough other ways to learn that um, all the hustle in the world isn't going to help me if by the time I get to whatever the goal was. I had a miserable time on the way getting there. I'm really grateful to be in a space where I'm able to stop and take some time to reflect more often than I have been able to in the past. In terms of what we're gonna do for this video then, it's just some time to sit and yeah, reflect on this past year, uh, give ourselves permission to do a little bit of thinking about like what's most at the forefront of the mind for heading into this upcoming year. The word goal always feels kind of loaded. I have learned about myself in the past that I set myself up for failure if I have too strict of a goal, a goal that is structured into restrictive a way. Um, I think that we can all relate to most often maybe with health related goals, but with other creative endeavors or, you know, professional endeavors as well. Maybe it's a, a dietary thing that you want to aspire to in terms of your eating habits, or maybe it's an exercise habit, or maybe it's a Duolingo streak, or maybe it's art related. You want to make a certain thing or dedicate a certain amount of time. If it's too strict of a goal, then the first time you fall off the wagon with it, the first time you know that you don't eat the way that you told yourself you were gonna eat, the first time that you don't wake up extra early to run the mile or whatever the goal was, it's really easy then to feel like you wanna throw in the hat because the whole endeavor is wasted, you know? You have the vision at the start of the year that you were gonna be able to look back on like a happy little calendar of check marks that you did the thing for the entire goal, the progress that you're tracking in an app, you think you feel like you've thrown off the progress in the forest app or whatever it is if you have uh, you know let yourself fall off, fall off the wagon for one instance of it and so for me I've learned that having a more gentle 
approach to my intentions, endeavors that I set for myself is a better road to success. There, I'm sure, could be criticism there about like, you know, when it's time to put pedal to the metal or when it's a really time sensitive thing, obviously really structured goals, it's really necessary sometimes to break down something that like needs to be done in a certain way by a certain time. And that's great, that's one thing. But for me, my like, overall just life trajectory, how do I feel like I'm doing as a person? How do I feel like I'm doing on long-term goals? Uh, my long-term goals, I feel like I've had a lot more success and it's better in my brain <laughs> if I keep that topic more in the space of broadly in my journaling, what am I thinking about? And like, you know, let me endeavor to keep certain goals at the forefront of my mind on a regular basis and then just be frequently checking in with myself on how I feel like I'm doing with those goals. So let's start maybe just by just reflecting on like what some of the big accomplishments felt like from this past year, thinking back on what was cool about 2022. Pulling up the notes that I took on my phone. One really big accomplishment from this year was moving into this house. Um, my girlfriend and I had had the goal of moving in together and of wanting to get away from the expensive city in which we had been living. We were in Portland, Oregon, and to now be in a smaller, kind of slower paced, certainly less expensive, part of Oregon has been really, really good for us. We've been living here for, what, about six months? Moved in in about June. In 2022, I really rocked some health-related goals that I had been putting off for a long, long time. My health anxiety, my, my anxieties as they relate to health and medical topics, I had for a long time let my anxieties take the form of, I don't wanna deal with going through the motions of the red tape medical bureaucracy and dealing with fucking doctors and dealing with scheduling and dealing with co-pays. Let me just pretend like everything is fine. And I'm really proud of myself that in this past year, I found a doctor that I like. I put in the, uh, the shitty trial and error efforts on some new medications, did some really good work with my therapist. This was a really good year of tackling some long-standing health shit. This was also a really good year of some travel opportunities, but I don't bring it up to celebrate necessarily like the specific accomplishment of the travel, because frankly, I, as like a boring introvert homebody, there, I won't say that I don't enjoy travel. I mean, I feel like that's somebody saying they don't like food, they don't like music. Like, sure, yes, of course, there's a lot about traveling that can be very fulfilling and very exciting and very educational and very expansive. There's a lot about travel that stresses me out. And uh, again, I, I have a tendency, just like with the medical anxiety, when there's one aspect of a topic that like stresses me out, I often just throw the baby out with the bathwater and miss out on what could be good aspects of an experience because I don't want to deal with the negative aspects, the difficult aspects. So I'm really proud not just of the fact that like I had some really wonderful travel experiences this past year, but specifically I'm proud of the fact that even though it was a lot of work to plan the things and it was a lot of money to invest and it was a lot of interruption of my routine and different aspects uh, of the travel experiences that stressed me out, I did it. I committed, I, I made the plans and then I followed through on the plans and I'm glad that I did. I am really grateful that I had the opportunity to spend really good quality time with friends and family at the Oregon coast and in Las Vegas and in Minneapolis and in um, different parts of Washington. Like there's so much really cool travel, road tripping, uh, things that I, experiences that I would have missed out on with the people that I love if I had let my curmudgeonly fear of breaking up my routine hold me back. And then obviously one of the other really incredible things from this year, YouTube, my guy, my guy, my pal, my friend, hi there. If you're watching this video, you're my, you're my parasocial pal. You're my internet friend. I could never have imagined uh, when I started on this YouTube journey that I would be even where I am now, let alone in a position to dare to hope that there might be more really cool experiences coming down the pipe with YouTube in the future. I've had this channel for about five years, something like that, seven years. It's been, a, it's been a minute. I'm proud of everything that I've ever put on this channel, uh, but I definitely was keeping myself in like a narrow 
wheelhouse, a specific kind of uh, bubble with my videos previously. I was only ever uploading music and I never kept myself on any type of schedule in terms of my output, uh, which was really great for the years that that's what I needed. For many years, the function that this channel played in my life was I work really hard on other aspects of my creative career outside of YouTube, and those things are very tied to, you know, strict output and scheduling and coordinating with other people and getting paid, like, you know, those, those are different types of commitments. So YouTube is going to be my one place where I can just be loosey-goosey and free and follow whatever impulses strike me, upload whatever kind of songs I feel like uploading whenever I feel like uploading them, and for a while that was really, really helpful. But for a long time I've had the, the idea in the back of my head of like, what would happen if I put in a little more effort? Would I maybe find other like-minded nerds on this platform who want to hang out? So just as a personal goal and because the timing works well for me, it was beginning in September of 2022, a few months ago that I began the, uh, the goal of weekly uploads for one year. So from at least September 2022 to September 2023, I aspire to uh, at least always be trying to put one video on this channel every single week for the year. And I've been absolutely shocked by, uh, by the experience of just these last few months since September. Um, when I started trying weekly uploads, I had about 60 subscribers and I now have about 360 subscribers as of the time of this recording. And I know that moving forward, uh, there's gonna be more reflection that comes up for me about um, what the different modes of creativity on this channel look like for me. Definitely the only main reason that this channel has blown up was because I like to make fan edits. I like to do, um, you know, like compilation videos of uh, different YouTubers that I like, and uh, one of those is the Try Guys, and I had one Try Guys video that I make just blow up with those fans, and that is obviously the, the main way that like this channel ever started to do well, and still now I've done um, four or five compilations now, and far and away, those are the videos that always do best. Like this video of us sitting here right now talking about New Year's, I don't expect many people to watch this video. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning and I'm having a good time starting to reflect on uh, what different pieces of content on this channel function as. Everything that I make for this channel has my personal investment behind it. Like I don't ever want to get to a point where I'm making something solely for the purpose of clicks or numbers. I am only ever going to put things on this channel that I am first and foremost just interested in putting up. But I am learning that like sometimes I'm putting up content that is primarily for me because I'm a verbal processor and sitting in front of a camera is very similar to just like, you know, sitting and talking to a friend or sitting and talking to my therapist. And uh, I, if I put up a vlog or something like this that only ever gets like 20 views, but I had a good time making it, I still get to consider that to have been a success as opposed to if I put up some fan compilation that gets 20,000 views, that is a different kind of success. I can feel myself starting to determine, especially as I start to think about efficiency and having the ability to balance my time well in the new year, I am starting to realize there's something to be said for just the difference of investment of my energy, right? Like this sitting here and reflecting on a new year's experience, this is something that I was gonna be doing anyway. And I just so happened to pull out my camera and do verbal processing instead of sitting and rambling into my journal as I do for long, long periods of time when I sit here in the rain instead. And you know, this will take me like maybe a couple hours to edit as opposed to like some of the more intricate like fan edits can take you know, many, many hours to edit and compiling all of that footage first to then be able to edit it together. As opposed to, you know, sometimes if I upload a song, that's just, again, something that I was gonna be doing anyway, because if there's a song on my mind, there's a song on my mind and I need to play it in order to get it out of my mind. But that's something that I can record in maybe 20 minutes and then not put any editing effort into. So I didn't anticipate that I would end up at this point where I am now of, the way that I'm creating for YouTube actually starting to teach me things and actually starting to show me new things about like 
my creative process and what I get out of making certain types of videos. I didn't anticipate that. That's been a really rewarding part of this experiment. And I'm really, really grateful to have had the stability and the support around me in my day-to-day -day life to be able to take the plunge in September to say to myself, you know what, fuck it, let's just start trying to do weekly uploads and see how it goes. This type of creativity is teaching me things about like my own process. And that's fucking exciting. I'm having a great time. If you're watching this, uh, you are part of what the YouTube experience has been like. Uh, through these few months uh, for longer than that if you're one of my like OG original like 62 subscribers hi my friends and family um, thank you for having been a part of what this experience is and I really look forward to whatever is going to be ahead for us in uh, this remainder of this time that I'm doing weekly uploads or just for the whole year of 2023 who knows I'm really really excited to go on the journey together so now that we've patted ourselves on the back for having had a wonderful 2022, some of the intentions that are most like forefront on my mind right now, these are just like the main things that, without even thinking about like overall the next 12 months, um, just the main things that are on my mind as I sit right here on December 30th and reflect on what are some of the current challenges that I'm facing and ways in which I want to try to address them. I'm grappling with the necessity for balance in my day to day. It's really exciting that YouTube has taken off in some of the different ways that it has these last few months. I also recognize though that some of my big successes with this channel have been to the detriment of like my sleep schedule or my social schedule. Really one of the big uh, detriments that I need to address is that I'm doing fine financially right now, but I definitely had the intention when I moved down here and like set up this new home office, I had the aspiration of figuring out, you know, side hustle bullshit, diversifying the streams of income, all those personal finance buzzwords. I want this period of time to be not just that I'm getting by financially, but that I am really growing a little nest egg and like setting aside some savings and starting to flourish financially in a way that I haven't before. And if that's gonna happen, it's going to necessitate finding some better balance. I can't be putting so, so, so many hours every single week into things that are essentially right now just a creative hobby. Even if that factor weren't there, when I stay up until 2 a.m. to edit a video, that fucks up my sleep, that fucks up my whole, you know, rhythm for the next day. I can definitely also recognize that like some other health aspects uh, are getting neglected. It, it's that classic thing that I know so many of us struggle with. I'm not saying anything new. I don't expect it to ever be a perfect balance and I don't expect it to ever be a one and done. Like obviously there are peaks and valleys and different seasons of life where like these last few months, it was really, really good for me to dedicate the majority of my like free time and uh, mental energy to this one goal of YouTube. That was really important. And I think it's impressive, frankly, that the only thing that kind of suffered in the way that it did was like my sleep schedule and my physical health in terms of like, you know, just being hunched over editing for hours and hours and like, you know, only eating ramen because I can't be bothered to get up from the computer long enough to do anything else. The fact that the only real things that I've neglected have been like certain aspects of my own health and the fact that I'm like only doing okay financially and not like, you know, dedicating more of my spare time to making side income, that I think is pretty great. I am grateful to have been able to experiment with those different like uses of my time these last few months because now I'm at a point where I'm able to say to myself, well, how could we improve on that further? How do I need to be honest with myself about the ways in which this method of success is not sustainable, right? Like, I don't expect it to be perfect and I don't expect it to be a permanent solution if I find different aspects of feeling like there's a solution, but a main priority that I have in front of me currently is, Chloe, there's gotta be some better way to balance out and spread out, yes, YouTube, but also you got to start making some more side income somewhere and you got to be getting your eight hours of sleep a night. You got to occasionally take a fucking walk. You got to occasionally get on the fucking row machine. You got to stretch, you know, like basic things in terms of my health. 
uh, that feels achievable. That feels possible. And one of the only other real kind of priorities that is most on my mind when I think about um, what is lacking or what has emerged as a pattern these last few months especially, I have always had a problem with urgency and anxiety related to feeling like I'm not doing enough, feeling like the only solution then is to burn the candle at both ends and do more. And specifically, I have always had a problem with that tendency turning me into a curt, rushed, cynical, callous version of myself when I am at my worst. When I am not at my best, I have a tendency to be snippy with the people around me. I have a tendency to be dismissive. I have a tendency to be really negative in my own self-talk in terms of like, you know, the, the monologue running in my own head, my own internal dialogue, and like how I talk to myself and beat myself up when things don't go right. I don't like those aspects of myself. When I'm feeling particularly not like myself, when I'm feeling particularly stressed, when I'm feeling particularly harried, um, often it is after I take a moment to reflect on whether I am being patient, whether I am being kind to myself and others, whether I feel like I am able to move at my own pace or if I feel too much like pressure either externally or from myself to go, 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 get things done in a certain way at a certain time on somebody else's timeline. The remedy then often is to try to return to a centered place of Chloe, if there were no external pressures at all right now, how would you feel? Who would you be? At what pace would you be moving through the world? So this is an ongoing topic that is often at the forefront of my brain, but it just feels particularly important right now. Again, I, it, it ties into the necessity I feel for some better type of balance. There must be some better balance to be struck with on the one hand, being an ambitious person who wants to get a lot of shit done, but on the other hand, sees how necessary it is to move through the world as a decent human being, right? When I think about my best version of myself, looking back on what I've accomplished at the end days or whatever the fuck, a lot of that reflection for me is about that lesson that has been so central for me of like, any goals that I want to accomplish won't be worth having accomplished if I didn't like who I was on the way there. Just a return to that mission feels really important right now. The big buzzwords that keep floating around in my brain recently are like just pace and calm and patience and deliberate. I, I aspire to be more deliberate more often instead of feeling like I'm caught up in other people's Hides. I know that I feel more like myself when I am able to be deliberate about how I'm moving through the world, where I'm focusing my time, how I'm speaking to myself and others. So just pace and not wanting to feel so rushed. Um, let's just do some like rapid fire things that like if I make a video again like this next year, I think it would be good for me to be able to reflect back on, um, hey Chloe, here are some things that you think you might get done this upcoming year. Did you or did you not? I really don't like the idea of New Year's resolutions because again, I feel like that's very wrapped up in all that very like stigma and high pressure language of, uh, if you set this intention, but then you don't do it in exactly the way you thought you might on January 1st, then it was some sort of a failure. So instead, I really like to just have collections of ideas, things that I think I might do to start off the year and then to be able to reflect back on it. And in past years, I have done that in a more structured way. I've enjoyed doing things like mood boards or like, you know, writing a letter to my, you know, pa my future self of like, you know, something in my journal to like read back on this in, in, in like, you know, December 
of the year when it's done. Over the last few years, I've gotten out of certain of those habits. And uh, one thing that has been really cool, again, some, something that I can pat myself on the back for of a good habit for 2022, I'm back in the habit of using a planner, like an actual just physical um, planner in addition to like, you know, the Google Calendar is where all the like actual practical day-to-day -day shit in terms of like scheduling and coordinating with other people lives. But this is now just another wonderful aspect of like my own personal like keeping track of my goals and my you know things that I'm getting done for myself and accomplishments and ways that I can reflect and give myself little stickers and I know that it's going to be really meaningful to be able to flip back through these pages in December of 2023 to reflect on the year and similarly I think that um, just having a little rapid fire list right here in this video that I could look back on in 11 months of, hey Chloe, as you were entering into January, 2023, here's some stuff that you thought you might end up prioritizing. Did you, did you not? Did, was it cool? Did you enjoy it? Uh, or did you not get around to this thing and you're glad that you didn't because you shifted your focus? Or did you not get around to this thing and now that you're watching the video back, you're able to say to yourself, oh, I forgot that I had had that on my mind. I'd like to return to that. A fun little way of talking to our future selves, right? Let's go for it. Future Chloe. Hi, Chloe. If it's December 2023 and you're watching this, um, enjoy this list. <laughs> Let me see. What did I say? What did I say? Oh, well, the first one. Top surgery, we're maybe heading towards top surgery in March-ish of 2023. Did top surgery happen, Chloe? How are you doing? <laughs> How was your healing? You've probably made a video about it if you ended up doing it. Did you end up using your uh, physical planner, uh, your like moon calendar that you love so much? And was that a good experience? Did you enjoy it? Are you gonna do a physical planner calendar again for the upcoming year if you're thinking about 2024? Do you have it picked out already? Are you doing it? Is that fun? Tattoos, tell me about your body art journey. Um, there's a flash art opportunity coming up um, uh, and here's just something for everybody to know moving forward. Uh, there's only going to be one Friday the 13th in the entire year of 2023. It's January. January, Friday the 13th is the only Friday the 13th. And I'm just a silly, spooky, um, superstitious bitch. And so I really like to always do something special on Friday the 13th. And I've always had the goal of wanting to do a flash art sale of just walk into a tattoo shop and get whatever's on the wall. They often do those sales for Friday the 13th. So Chloe, you've been talking to your buddy about maybe going and having a tattoo moment uh, in a couple weekends. Uh, did you do it? Are you doing it? Show me your tattoo. And did you get any piercings? I've been thinking a lot lately about um, adding some piercings to the right ear. How overall is your journey going in terms of like your style, personal expression? Uh, lately, you've been getting a lot of like gender euphoria energy out of like having short floofy hair and dressing in a more androgynous way and in past years the makeup journey has been very like re-embracing all the girly things that your internalized misogyny wouldn't really let you have fun with when you were a younger adult so things like bright colorful eyeliner and eyeshadow and lipsticks has been very much the vibe in the past and then recently you're more leaning into and, and having a lot of fun learning about certain like masculinizing makeup you're using bronze and you're doing like a heavier brow and that's been really interesting and uh, how is your like style and makeup and hair and clothing and all that kind of journey feeling right now what's your vibe man and are you having fun with it how is YouTube doing did you end up doing the goal that you had had of like weekly uploads from September 2022 all the way through to September 2023 do you think you still want to keep doing that or did you get to the finish line and say to yourself, oh, thank God I'm done and I don't have to do it anymore. How does it feel? Is that side hustle life going? Are you making some type of diversified income that doesn't just come from your one main day job? Something, something. Are you doing commission projects again? For a while, that was sort of a consistent, like, you know, way of getting sort of back into making money in a creative way and having a creative career. Uh, and you just sort of like fell off the wagon of like marketing those skills for yourself. Have you done any commission projects that you got paid for this year that felt good? How is the sort of rough plan coming along for cross-country move with girlfriend? When you guys moved into this apartment, 
in like June ish of 2022. The rough idea was, oh yeah, we're gonna live here for a year or two before we, you know, have enough savings to think about doing the cross country move. And it is quickly becoming apparent that a little bit more time <laughs> to sit and save and plan might be necessary. So is there like a five year plan? Is there a budget? Is there any sort of like, how, how overall are you feeling about like trying to move to the Midwest here at some point? Have the couple of local community volunteer opportunities that you've been looking into recently worked out? Is there something that you are doing regularly to like, is there some way that you're like regularly doing something in the community where you live in terms of volunteering? Ooh, little list of hobbies that I want to make sure I make more time for. Are you crocheting? You just got crochet stuff for Christmas and you're very excited excited about it. Are you speaking any Spanish? You have been so on and off the wagon over the course of the last like two years about trying to consistently learn some Spanish. How is your book journey going? I know that right now um, you're kind of questioning for yourself whether heading in a booktube-ish direction with your channel might feel good and organic and be kind of the direction in which you are naturally progressing. Is that a fact? Did that go in a certain direction? Uh, and separate and apart from the YouTube of it all or doing it in a public way, just how are you feeling about reading? It's been really cathartic and invigorating and empowering for you to get back into reading in general over the last few years. And you're feeling really good about it as you sit right here. How is your reading experience feeling from where you are. Oh God, have you played your fucking electric keyboard piano at all in this year? In the course of 2023, have you played it at all? When you moved into this apartment, you said to yourself, if I have not played it at all by a certain time, then I will have to be honest with myself that it's time to just get rid of it. <gasps> Did you ever figure out your N64 console? You, uh, for Christmas, got uh, the old family Nintendo 64 passed down, and you guys haven't been able to figure out how to get it working in the living room, but you really hope to be able to get it working soon. Are you playing Yoshi's Story? Are you playing Mario? Are you playing Mario Party, Super Mario, all the things? Wahoo! Um, what else? Yeah, and then just in general, more reflection on like pace and taking your time and not rushing so much. It's interesting, um, one sort of uh, genre of like vloggers that I've always enjoyed watching in terms of like productivity vloggers and people who do like cleaning vlogs. College vloggers also like have become more and more of that type of viewing that I do of just like, you know, people's studying experiences, the hustle and bustle of their college experience. There's one incredible channel right now, um, Dobo Chobo, who is attending University of Washington in Seattle, and that was my uh, almost school. I ended up going to school in Chicago, but I'm from that area of Washington and I almost became a husky myself so watching her vlogs is very um, uh, nostalgic. When I watch people's college vlog experiences it feels like a certain type of like reaching back in a time machine and bonding with the stressed person that I was at that age and what my college experience was like. And when I think back on really just like my teens and my 20s overall, a big part of what that period of my life feels like is just a blur of fast, just a blur of rush and urgency and stress and hustle and accomplishment and celebration, but speed. Uh, it, it feels like it went by so quickly and it feels like a lot of it was uh, stress <laughs> and like a lot of it was external stress and performance related stress, you know, for other people and to accomplish certain things by a certain timeline. It's incredible to get older and discover a sense of calm. There's a, a video that I made a while back uh, doing some other sort of more focused reflecting on like the experience of getting older and how the experience of getting older is also teaching me some good lessons about like how much I used to stress about ideas of being cool or, or what being cool or uncool feels like in terms of pressure from other people um, and how it feels related to age and like, you know, relevancy for me of like you get old and you're irrelevant and nobody fucking cares about you anymore anyway, so you might as just well do whatever the fuck you want to do. It's been surprising to me to get closer to 40. You know, I'm 36 right now. Uh, I'm turning 37 in April. And I don't think I ever could have anticipated that 
something that is changing in my brain is a sense of have time. Like, I didn't turn into a pumpkin when I turned 30, you know? I'm not gonna turn into a pumpkin when I turn 40. There's such a sense of the expansiveness of time that on the one hand, there's no reason for me to not live my life as if I could hope to have many, many years still in front of me, and so I don't need to rush and pressure myself so much. I can try to have a good quality of my day-to-day -day life um, while reaching for the things that I want to accomplish. And there's also an appreciation of the fragility of life and the fact that your time is not guaranteed. I never thought that I would have ended up in this very existential joy place of, of course, I want to be excited about what my life might be in one or five or 10 or 30 years. But I also want today to have been a good day because I might get hit by a bus tomorrow. <laughs> like there's such celebration. Uh, there's so much to be excited about when I embrace the fact that like this could all end at any time. And I, I take a lot of joy and a lot of comfort in that. When I find myself spiraling into the urgency and the hustle and the panic, the sense that I need to be moving faster, getting more done. One of those things that instantly centers me and helps me take a calming breath is the reminder that that was a stressful thing to deal with today, but if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, then it will not have meant anything, <laughs> you know? And in the meantime, I can give myself permission right now to stop and take a breath. I hope that none of what I just said sounded at all like derogatory or dismissive about like college vloggers and people who are so cool and generous and creative as to put their experiences of those years online for other people to see and be entertained by and learn from. It's an amazing thing that people do to share their experiences like that. And you know, one thing that I do really appreciate about those younger years for me was I did have some like older mentors in my life at that time who would occasionally try to say things to me like this of, uh, you know, you're gonna get older and you're, it's gonna be easier for you to take time and like, you know, you don't need to be rushing so much right now, you know, Vienna by Billy Joel. We're just doing like, you know, slow down your crazy child, that kind of thing. And I was lucky enough that those mentors who said those things to me when I was younger also always said it on the note of, I'm gonna say this to you, but I know you're not gonna listen because I know you just need to learn it for yourself. So here's the information if you want it, but no hard feelings if you don't take the advice. And sure enough, like none of this ever was gonna hit for me until it organically was ready to hit for me. And uh, similarly, I would never say to somebody in their teens or their 20s or any of these college vloggers, hey, you know what, you crazy kids, you should slow down, take it from me, because I know what I'm talking about. That's not the point, obviously. The point is how beautiful and um, chaotic and strange and awesome it is that we are all at different places in life and we all can learn different things from each other in terms of the different places that we are. And it's all informed by where we've individually come from. And that's why it's important to reflect. And now that I've gone down that rabbit hole, uh, I think it's apparent that I need to stop talking. <laughs> If you've watched this far, thank you for staying and hanging out. I uh, hope that it's been entertaining or given you any kind of food for thought, but I also want to end on a note of reminding all of us that like time is made up and none of this shit matters. It's an arbitrary 12 month calendar. It's an arbitrary idea that we as a society reflect or set goals or create resolutions or whatever in January. If the concept of, you know, stopping and having goals or reflecting like this at this time of year doesn't ring true for you, if it stresses you out, if it uh, is difficult for you, if there are different times of year instead of this time of year where you feel more called to some notion of like a personal reset or like a personal reflection process, I just want to tell you that that's super valid. Don't let the cultural zeitgeist bullshit consumerism culture of like, well, this is the time of year when you need to buy a bunch of planners and sign up for a bunch of gym memberships and download a bunch of fucking apps that are gonna change your life because this is gonna be the year. This is gonna be the year. Like there's a lot of this thing 
that we do as a culture that is very, very just fabricated. So if it doesn't ring true for you or if there are aspects about it that you think are harmful for you, then I, I hope that you can give yourself permission to unplug from it. I like about this time of year it being very much a thing of picking and choosing, right? I like to take what works for me from the cultural messages we get around like New Year's and reset and stuff like that, and I like to leave the rest of it on the table. So I hope that that's helpful for you as well. Leave me some comments below about, you know, how you're doing. Uh, are there things that you uh, have been celebrating about how your 2022 went that you want to shout out below and that I can give you a little long distance internet high five and say, fuck yeah, well done. Are there intentions that you're heading into this new year with that you want to state out loud and, you know, give yourself the opportunity? Maybe you don't make YouTube videos, you know, that you plan on coming back and re-watching in 12 months and talking to your past self. But maybe you want to leave a comment below about like, hey, me, I'm leaving this comment because when I come back and re-watch this video in a year, I want to see if this thing that I'm talking about in terms of this goal or this intention worked out a certain way. I love doing that kind of shit. There are certain videos that are like, my um, sort of tradition to go back and rewatch a certain time of year. Um, there's like a Jenny Nicholson Halloween video. There are certain um, old Jenna Marbles videos around Christmas time that like I have comments in the comment section that like I'll go back and say to myself like, oh my God, I left a comment on this video in like 2016, like a little digital timestamp that exists publicly that like you can go back and like it's the equivalent of, you know, going back to your hometown and like seeing the, the wall behind your high school that you like graffitied with your initials or something, right? It's like a little digital yearbook kind of thing. So leave me some comments below. Um, say hi to yourself of the future. Say hi to each other. Let's just talk about how we're, we're doing with this New Year's experience. And I look forward to giving you long distance internet high fives. If you feel up to it, I have some links below in the description box about organizations that could use your support right now or just a share. Uh, or if it is more helpful, I also just have some like mental health resources below. If you're having a tough time, please feel welcome to take advantage of those. Take care of yourself. If you enjoy mediocre pictures on Instagram or the cool misadventures of a cool 36 year old cool kid being cool on TikTok, or gay memes and rambles on Tumblr, then I hope that you will come hang out with me at your social media location of choice. I am at Chloe the Pain on all the things. Shout out to my patrons, Hiker Steve and Cherry That Tomato. I might be getting rid of the Patreon soon. I forgot to mention that that's definitely something that I can see is creating like a rabbit hole of just admin work for myself right now and that is... anyway for now you can check out the description box below <laughs> for information about my patreon uh you can also check out information about my website hiring me for commission songwriting stuff and i hope that you'll consider liking this video if you liked it and hitting the subscribe button if you would like to stick around i upload new videos on this channel every wednesday slash thursday i think that's it for right now and that's it for the year! <laughs> Look at us! We made it! Ah, that's my imaginary horn. That's my imaginary, um... Ah. I really like the paper horns, the ones that you blow and they unfurl and they go... I need to find some of those. Uh, anyway, Happy New Year! I hope that you are doing well. I will see you next time, and in the meantime, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. And now we will uh, create an end card. There are links. Click on all the links. Do you hear the rain? Have you been able to hear the rain at all during this video? Leave me a comment if you were able to hear the rain. And look at the lights. Isn't it so amazing to have fairy lights? Everything is better with fairy lights. Let's all be fairies. 2023 goal. Let's all be fairies. Cheers. Let's all have a super gay rainbow heart year. Yay.